My guest is definitely one of a kind. He has written, directed, produced, and starred in one of the most unique films you will ever see in your life, The Room. On May 6th and 12th, it will be showing in 700 theaters in America and Canada, thanks to Riftrax.com, who will be offering their commentary. He has inspired the hit book The Disaster Artist, which is now being turned into a motion picture directed by James Franco. His new sitcom The Neighbors offers nothing less than the typical was so... Um, magic. He is shadowed in mystery, bathed in bizarreness, and I can guarantee you there is nobody else in the world like him, and there probably will not be for a very, very long time. Please welcome Tommy Wiseau! Oh, hi, Tommy. Hi, Doug. How are you? I'm wonderful, wonderful. Let me just start off by saying uh, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, all seriousness, I think this is very, very awesome of you to come on here and do uh, this interview, so I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Well, thank you, too. I mean, the reason I'm doing it because, you know, I think people should understand that I'm pro-freedom, and that's why, as you know, we approved the riff track idea about uh, screening and talking about the room. I always say you can laugh, you can cry, you can express yourself, but please don't hurt each other. There's nothing wrong with it. If somebody uses somebody's material, make it fun of it. As long as they pay for license, questionable, right? Move on, next question. <laughs> next question. First question, here we go. Um, I was going to say, before their riffing of The Room, were you a fan of riff tracks, and what did you think of their commentary of your film? Well, let me say this. is a, I'm not a fan of the riff track. However, let's just straight out the records here. I support them. The reason for it, because some people, including myself, we are pioneer of a new entertainment in Hollywood. And I think people don't grasp this, you see? And America is about to express themselves. So I think uh, you as well, uh, Red Track people, you are pioneer on a certain entertainment when people will say, hey, this is funny, or, or uh, let's just do this. The studio system right now, they say, wait a minute, actually, maybe it is entertainment, you know what I'm saying? I totally know what you're saying. My movie never will be produced by the studio system, let's face it. Let's be realistic here, that's a fact. It's a good guess on your part, I agree. Okay, good, here you go. People don't realize the concept of that room, what was behind it. But anyway, it's your floor, so ask questions, whatever. <laughs> you know, I, uh... That is actually exactly what I want to talk about. I want to ask you uh, about The Room. You know, your movie has inspired uh, uh, so many, namely yourself, and I know a ton of people who go into that movie and they, honest to God, say to themselves, by God, I can be a better filmmaker. And I'm wondering, what is it like to inspire so many people on such a grand scale? I think it's a, a flattering, and then the way you describe right now, yeah, of course, we have many talented filmmakers across the world, especially in America. But the fact also is that uh, I believe original material, you know, I always say to any person who tries to be a filmmaker, I say, who, oh, well, you may make a fun of my movie, fine, but guess what? On the end of the day, as you said, is the original material? The answer is yes. You know, sometimes could be also not flattering, as you know, <laughs> but you have to accept it, you know, you have to be optimistic. And that's where I come from, and that's why we have this interview, because I think uh, we live in America, I think uh, we like to put uh, what we want to uh, say about, you know, our lives sometimes, and sometimes it's just too much when people are misleading, as you probably know about it, about my life, and I'm American, yes, I do have accents, so what, so be it, you know. Move on, next question. Next question. When this film came out, a lot of people realized that it dared to ask the question, why would grown men dress in tuxes and play football? And I was wondering if there was any part of you that felt maybe people didn't understand the film. Do you think the majority understand it and they get it or they're missing something? Well, they're missing something because, because again, this is the thing where the parody comes that sometimes I say it's okay when people use it, let's say, three minutes parody or whatever. I'll be honest with you, Doug, I'm straightforward against when people use the original material, they don't pay for license. That's my straightforward, you know? Well aware, yeah. However, it's a, it's a gray area where people don't understand that it's nothing wrong when people say, hey, I don't understand what, the, what, what is this, the room is about, you know? So I see some of the audience actually have on the team that they say, what did I watch right now, you know? So Hollywood uh, was not ready for something different. 
we, we changed the, the crew four times, not three times, not two times, four times. We changed the actors. We can talk about probably for two hours, but I, wanna, I don't want to just talk about myself. It's your floor, so you're the reporter. <laughs> the subplot, one of the big subplots in the film uh, is with the child character, Denny, and the powerful anti-drug message that clearly you practice in real life, and coincidentally, at the exact same time, there was a sharp drop in LSD and ecstasy sales the exact same year this movie came out. <laughs> Tommy, do you think this film was powerful enough to influence people to get off drugs? You, you are pulling my legs, dog. But nah, like, you never know, man. You never know. But let me tell you this way. This is a good question about drugs. I, why I put the drugs? Why I put it is that the supposed to be a play. Okay, and I condense everything to, to 90 minutes, and I will have everything there. So you have a little Caesar salad, but there's nothing wrong with that. So to respond to your question, I do not know. I know one thing, that two is better than three, three is crowd. That's what I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you yourself can't remember why you put in the Denny drug subplot? Oh, absolutely, I do. Absolutely, but I'm just saying I do not know if my movie influenced that people are much more aware about drugs issue. I know one thing that when people are watching the thing twice, it is wrong when people started hating, which we have a couple of apples, as you know. Uh, but it, it, again, this is the thing, but you have to accept it. You know, it's different cookie cutter from Hollywood. That's the room. Okay, I think I followed that. Um, there have been many different interpretations uh, of this film from many different people. Some see it as a dark comedy, some see it as a drama, others as an alibi. But in this case, I think with The Neighbors, the new show that you're doing, it is intentionally a comedy, and you've shot all these episodes. What can you tell us about the making of this new show? Because you're totally in control of this, correct? Right. Well, the neighbor is, is slightly different with the room, but you see, I learned from my teacher. She's now probably 80 or 90 years old, something like that. She's still alive. Very simple thing. The more colors you have. But the question is how you put the colors. Colors, when I mean uh, reaction between people, you know, uh, in the room case, for example, situation. I go by emotion. I started, I'm an actor, professional. I, I always say, the stage is my house, you know? I love stage, I really do. And then, you know, it's too bad sometimes, you know, I don't get enough job, but it's not, I'm not here to complain. You as a filmmaker, you need a vision. If you don't have vision, forget the whole thing, you know? You may copy somebody, but it's not the same. I have a vision seven years ago, you can see some of the stuff on YouTube, but I changed because I, I changed because I'm on a different, I will have a, you know, some kind of culture. In, in America, we have a great culture, you know? Yeah, you were talking about uh, originally the, the Room was a play. One of the biggest questions that comes up is why the film is called The Room. A am I right? I heard a rumor that because it was a play, most of it took place in one room, and that's the reason it was called that. Is there any truth to that? Actually, actually not. Uh, I said many times, but I would tell you, uh, The Room is a special place. That's why we say the room. It's not our room, English one on one. It's a special place. You who in charge, who who you who decided what to do. You you don't get a you know traffic ticket, whatever. That's why we call it the room. You know, it's just too bad again. You know, like some people, like you, you go to the size, like IMDb, whatever, because it's just you know. When I started doing the room, it was only one title, the room, and now you have like 20, 30 titles. So some of the douchebag. What I'm saying to you guys is shame on you, you know? Shame on you that you do not have a respect for Tommy Wazo. Uh, I encourage you to look at behind the scene on DVD as well, the Blu-ray, to see you can learn something. You educate yourself. You know, I did a lot of research. You know, I'm a very detail-oriented person. I, I like it when people ask, uh, challenge me, you know? It's, it, life is full of challenging, you know, every single day. Anyway, move on to next question. You often answer any questions about where you're from with simply, I'm an American, so I'm not going to ask that question. I'm not going to uh, bring Play that up. Whatever you want, Doug. I will ask this, though. Um, what part of America are you from? Poland, Czechoslovakia, or France? Say it again. Uh, what part, I'm sorry, my accent's very thick. What part of America are you from? Poland, Czechoslovakia, or France? America, you say? Uh, part of America, yeah. 
Well, you know, I grabbed New Orleans, Louisiana, you pulled my legs again, but that's okay, move on, next question. <laughs> One of the other things people ask about, I'm sure you've heard this question a million times, but I just, I feel foolish not ask it. Uh, the, the, the spoon in the frame, I, I just gotta add, just a love for spoons, or you just forget to take a picture out? Well, no, the, the spoon, you know, it's again, you know, um, do you know the expression, plastic is cheaper than wood? I do now. A long time ago, actually, you have a, a spoon, um, you know, wood spoon. Now you have a plastic. The reason we put it is because it's just symbolized somewhat, but how the spoon come out with throwing, etc. You see, it's, it's again, this is the thing what people don't understand, that I submitted uh, the room to Academy Award, and when I was forced, actually, after two weeks, take the, the, the movie out. I don't know if you know the story. No, I don't. We got the trouble with Fire Marshal because I got a lot of emails that people want to see my movie. I said, okay, let's just screen the wheelchair. So we screened the room there, and we got into trouble. So long story short, I, I called Sienna and said, hey, you guys want to, can we work with you guys? And I received great support from them. And we, we, we screened the room back to the theater, and that's what the, everything started. So it's not a coincidentally that what happened happened. Yeah, certain situations happen, but a lot of people want to have a credit for something that don't even deserve it, you know? So, move on, next question. Wow, no, it's pretty impressive from why is there a spoon in a frame? Um, I only have two, I have two final questions. I like to end every interview with it. Uh, in all sincerity, all honesty, uh, the first question I have is, uh, whether it be professional or personally, what is the hardest thing you've ever had to do, and how did you get through it? Uh, that's a good one. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one, actually. Oh, thank you. Um, well, you know, I graduated from Bay Area. It was pretty hard for me because at the time, I was building the building. Long story short, we had a problem with water, and I was almost, almost fall down from the roof, and that was, it was, it was disaster. I, I never forget that. The wind could be so strong, we don't even realize, you know, till we actually observe nature. I was very depressed and I was very, say, hi, wow, you know, how much energy do I have to do, you know? But it, uh, another thing is the room, you know, it uh, affects me somewhat, but I always think positive. So, so to respond to the second part of your question, uh, you know, when you think positive, you're optimistic about life. That's the direction I think uh, a lot of people should go. That's what I'm going. So whatever people say negative, I always try to turn into positive, you know. That's all what we have. We live in this planet in a very short time. I think it's very important to, if you, for example, your company or Red Truck, my creation, you know, we, we give some smile to people. I think we did a good job. And I think that's what America is about. Also, I would like to say, I was interviewing. Thank you for supporting the room. Hopefully, we'll see you. I will see you at the the room screening. And as you know, we have a red truck, 700 theater across uh, the country, USA, and also Canada on May 6th. May May 6th and May 12th as well. Correct. Uh, and I, I have one last question for you, very similar to the last one. Uh, again, whether professionally or personally, what is the proudest thing that you've ever done in your life? I am proud to be uh, to to create the room. Be honest with you, and now the neighbors. And I'm very proud of it, and that'll be the rest of my life. And I'm proud to respect people. That's that's the reason I'm talking to you and others. And I, and I think that's what America is about. Tommy, again, in all seriousness, I think it's wonderful that you did come on here and that you did this. And I actually really do look up to your optimism, and I look up to the fact that you did get these done. I've known so many people that try something and fail and don't get through it, and uh, you, you pulled all the way through it, and uh, I just want to say thank you so much again for being on here. Same here. Thank you very much, Doug, and uh, I love you all. And uh, Go to www.theroommovie.com as well, www.riftrack.com. Thank you very much. I love you all. Thank you. Take care, sir.